Welcome back to part two of this ocean resin art tutorial on how to make a beach scene using real sand. My name is Michelle Tracy. Now that the previous layer has dried overnight and hardened, I'm ready to start mixing my resin. I'm mixing equal parts of art resin and I'll stir it slowly for five minutes in a safe environment without fumes. And this time I remembered to leave clear resin. So there's my clear resin going on first and then I'll mix the colors. The white is going to be poured over that clear so that way some of the sand from underneath still shows through. And the two colors are a bit more transparent than the first layer just so that the previous layer can shine, show through it and it creates a bit more interest and you can see a bit of it underneath. Now I let my white sit for about 10 minutes before I poured that line just so that it was a bit thicker and more opaque. Otherwise I found in the past it can be a little too um, transparent and a bit wishy-washy and not thick enough and you can see here that I have my heat gun on just a low fan setting because it's such a thin and delicate line I don't want to blow the whole line off and I'm sure to use the blowtorch to bring out some cells the wave has come over the wet sand a little bit too much than what I had planned because the resin just simply runs sometimes and expands but that's okay, it will still work. I still have some of that wet sand underneath exposed in parts. While I still have a bit of resin left, clear resin left, I'll start to stick down these pebbles. And the resin has thickened up a little bit, which is perfect, so it's not going to spread out too much when I squash those pebbles down. And I couldn't resist adding more crystals, so here's some white quartz crystals along with those clear ones I placed down on the water edge previously. Now there may be a time when you stop and maybe less is more but I just had to, <laughs> I just keep going, I don't know, I just keep going until I feel like there's enough. The tweezers are really helpful in this case because they're just so tiny. And I'm trying to be very delicate with dropping that resin on so I'm not spreading it all out over the place so I'm getting just a tiny bit on at a time. And it'll just, they will stick to that resin. It is so, it is so durable. They will not come off. And art resin will stay clear. It will not yellow. So I don't have to worry about any little yellow bits forming over the years uh, around those pebbles and rocks. I should mention that I do sand my resin between coats. So after it's dried overnight and it's hard, I will lightly sand the area where I'm going, I plan to pour the next coat. That's so the resin has something to stick to and I did it here as well. For this final layer, I'm just using clear resin. I'm not mixing any pigments into it because I'm happy with the colors underneath. I think there's plenty of color there. And this time I let the white sit in the cup for a further 15 minutes. So that way it was thick and I knew that I would get a nice thick wave over it and because I'm using such a thin line it needs to be thick enough. Then of course using the blowtorch to bring out the cells and pop any bubbles. So here's the end result. I hope you like it. It turned out in the end. It took on a different path but you know what? I like it. And I titled this one See in my path. Thank you so much for watching everyone. As always please leave your comments for me. I love reading them. Thank you so much. See you next time.